celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey! Joe the host. Okay, here I am. I am the host of this here show. And uh, welcome to our program. My name is Alex, and we will be here until, uh, let's see here, till um, 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 midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. Okay? And uh, we'll have our citizens panel in a little while, but uh, once every couple of weeks, we like to go out and uh, check in with somebody who used to be my wife. There's that lovely face. There she is. It's, uh, it's Ronnie Bennett. Uh, no relation anymore. <laughs> well, I, that depends on what you call a relation, you know? It, yeah. Former husband is a relationship of some kind. Of you know? some kind, yeah. Either it can be good or it can be bad. In this case, it's turned out to be pretty damn good. Yes. Uh, How are you? I I'm fine, and this is what she affectionately refers to as the Ronnie and Alex show. Yes. What else? You yes. know? No, yeah. it's the Alex and Ronnie show. I went oh. alphabetical with our names. Oh, oh did you really? Yes. Oh, yes. okay. All right. <laughs> Running the show as you used to. I see. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Of course. What's new in your life out there? It's been pretty sad. Um, my cat Ollie. Uh, who is nearly 14, has been sick for several months, and he was down to just skin and bones. And so I had to put, I don't like to say it that way, but, you know, I hate the word euthanasia too, but did that on Saturday, and I'm still missing him, of course. Um, I, but I discovered, because my vet was unavailable that day, that there's an organization here called Compassionate Oh, compassionate what? Companions or something like that. Anyway, they're, it's a group of veterinarians, and all they do is make house calls to, you know, uh, <laughs> when the time comes, send the pet off to pet heaven. Yeah. And uh, a woman came and did that on Saturday. It was terribly sad. And, you know, the same thing that's happened to me with people and other pets has been happening is you just you think you see them out of the corner of your eye going yeah, by yeah. You know, for a while, and then you look and no, 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 or maybe it isn't just a ghost. Who knows? But um, the, but it, it's yeah. it's we were almost fourteen years together, and we were good friends, and we argued all the time about how things should be done in the house, and sometimes I won, and sometimes he did, um, and he was. He was just gorgeous, and he was wonderful. We, and we was should add friend. that he was an exotic animal, in a way. Uh, oh, well, he was a hybrid. He was one-sixth African serval. Yeah. And that's called a savanna cat. And he was beautiful. He was, I mean, I, I was, he was lovely. Oh. I mean, he stayed with me on a couple of occasions. You know, I tried to find that. It's somewhere on my computer, and I couldn't find it. But that wonderful photo when I was away, and he was at your house years ago, sitting on the sofa with a can of beer next to him watching <laughs> television with you. <laughs> it was pretty Wait, funny. Can, why would there be a can of beer? Because I don't drink beer. Well, maybe it was a can, it was of, a can, soda. can of soda. I don't remember. I couldn't be a find can the of photo. Soda. <laughs> it was pretty funny with his legs spread out in front of him. Yeah, he, if I could track down the photo, eventually I'll publish it on the blog. <laughs> he was huge. I mean, yes. he was, the, yes. the savannas are so big that their owners usually walk them around the neighborhood on a leash. Well, that's not the reason. Um, I mean, first of all, they're medium-sized cats. I mean, yeah. if you can tell on the screen, they're, you know, the house cat is like this size, they're bigger. Yeah. But they're medium-sized, servals are medium-sized cats. When I still lived in New York on my block, mm -hmm. or down the street aways, a couple had a brother and sister servals, and they did walk them, but they were what's called F1s. They were 50% wild, and they were much more like their wild cats, and they also like water a lot, um, but mine didn't. He was one-sixth serval, and he couldn't have cared less. I mean, well, not only couldn't care less, the idea of a harness was not something that was ever going to be accomplished with him. Yeah. 
So um, he didn't. He was more like a house cat. Um, he was a good guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the problems with hybrids, and I would never have one again, is that I'm not so sure I like the idea at all. But um, is veterinarians? They haven't been around long enough for veterinarians to know about them. That you know, different breeds have different kinds of things right. that they have prob- medical problems with, and they don't know enough about uh, savannah cats to be sure about whatever they're doing or what they think they should do or what the animal might have wrong with them. So they're not a good idea on several levels. <clears throat> but uh, but he was a good guy, and he was so beautiful. He Just was. He so was a beautiful, beautiful cat, and, and he you would have him stay with me, and he never would have anything to do with me for, the mo- right. for most of the time when you were gone, unless I started working at the computer, in which case he would then, like, grab my legs while I was trying to type and do stuff. And then as soon as oh, I... I'd forgotten. You told me that a long time ago. And as soon ago, as I'd I would pay that. attention to him, he was back to, an, uh, you know, avoiding me. Right. You know. Uh, he got better in his old age about people. In the, uh, Back then, he just didn't like people who weren't me, whether I took him somewhere or, um, or you came to my house. But he got better in the last few years of his life. He, at least he would let you pet him once or twice. I and mean, what he—he he was a biter, you know. And I mean, on things like if I didn't serve breakfast or dinner fast enough, he'd bite my ankle. My, the whole time he was with me, my ankles were in shreds. Um, <laughs> and and you'd pet him, and he seemed to be perfectly happy. He's purring away, and you pet him, and then all of a sudden he turns and whack! He's got you. He's bit your hand. What? Why would? It, why do they do things like well, that? Well, <laughs> anyway, he, he with me, he would like avoid me, but he had a sixth sense of when you were coming back. All right, oh. <laughs> and so at, at, I could count on it that about a day before you got back, he would suddenly take a shine to me. He would start <laughs> being nice to me. And as, so what? So you wouldn't tell terrible stories to me yeah, when he got and, when and I got And as home? soon as you got back. You know, off he went. And then the next time you'd leave him with me, same story. It could be a week. It could be two weeks. It could be three days. On day two, he would suddenly warm up to me. Do you have a pet? No. Oh. Uh, I, 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 I There are a couple of reasons why I haven't had a pet. Um, one reason I haven't had a pet is that, uh, in especially in this apartment, uh, my wife likes to leave the windows open. Oh, wow. And how high up are you? Eight <laughs> floors. Okay. <laughs> and so I just, I, I would love to have a cat and I would keep the windows closed. We do babysit a cat every now and then named uh, Berta, who's one of the smartest cats I've ever met in my life. We've fallen absolutely in love with her. And uh, Berta, when she comes, I do have screens for the windows. So I put the screens in. And are they tight enough so that they can't yeah, they're be pushed tight, they're, out? They're, they're tight enough. But yeah. still, if she stands on, say, the radiator, which looks out over the window, I'm kind of frightened, you know. I, I, my, wife, <laughs> I know my, my wife doesn't feel that way, but I do, you know. And I, I know that the cat probably won't jump out the window, but I do know the cat will probably try to walk out on the ledge. Yes, yes. <laughs> And and, uh, there's a guy that comes about every couple of years. We hire a guy to come and clean our windows, and he gets out on the ledge with a belt. Oh, yeah, I can't watch Uh, this. I I have to leave the house. I can't be here when that goes on. So if the cat even gets close to the window and it's it's got a screen in it, I'm going, get away from there. Get away from there, you know. And, of course, that's lost on a cat because now they really want to go by the window. Of course they do. They know from the tone of your and voice. He, and he, she likes to sit out on the radiator and look out the window uh, because there's a lot happening down there. Yes. She doesn't know what exactly, but things are moving. You know. Yes. Yes. So uh, anyway, so but uh, that's one reason I haven't had a cat. The only other reason I haven't had a cat. Uh, is because at my age, I don't want anything sitting there looking at me saying, you know, I'm probably going to be here when you're not. <laughs> you know, I put some thought to that because I've always had cats. Yeah. We had cats when we were married, and I've had them ever since, usually one at a time. Um, we had I'm another one of the we, we had another one of the greatest cats in the world, Shabbos. Yes, we did. <laughs> Shabbos was the greatest cat I've ever had. Um, 
but and I've I've thought about this even before Ali got sick that if he predeceased me, um, would I get another cat? Well, first of all, you know, in the same way that I didn't go out and get a brand new husband after you and I broke up, it takes a while. <laughs> um, <laughs> it it's the same thing. I mean, when your animal, your pet dies, you don't run out and get a new one. There has to be. He's still with me to a sense. It's not time. But I've thought about it, and I think that if I ever do it again, um, I'm going to go to one of those places where you can, you can adopt an old cat, and we can spend our old age together. Because most people want kittens, and they won't take old cats. And, right. You know, and if, if, if a cat doesn't have a home, an old cat doesn't have a home anymore because uh, his people died or, you know, awful. Some people just put a cat out and think they can take care of themselves. Um, it would be nice to give an old cat a good home for his final, his or her final I time. I think that's maybe a nice idea. But we'll see. It's going to be And fun. I could do that myself and probably feel good about it and even leave the windows open so if the cat commits suicide, <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> no, you can't leave the windows open. I love the old story that Truman Capote told about he was at, uh, he was going on a date with a woman, at least that's what he says. And and uh, he, so the woman says, I've got to still get ready. So she went into the her room and was w working on getting herself ready. And all of a sudden he looks at his feet and there's this little dog and he's got a ball. And he wants him to throw the ball. So oh, no. he picks up the ball and he throws it. And uh, the ball then bounces around the room and the dog chases around the room and then catches the ball and brings it back and drops it at his feet. He throws the ball again. And again, the ball bounces around the room and the dog bounces around the room and grabs the ball and drops it at his feet. He then grabs the ball, throws it, it goes out an open window and the dog goes right after it. Oh, what happened? So this was on like the Jack Parr show and Parr said, well, what did you do? He said, well, she came out from getting ready. I didn't say a word. We went to dinner, and then at dinner I mentioned, have you noticed your dog being visibly depressed lately? Oh, stop it. That's not funny. He told the story on The Tonight Show. Oh, God. Unrelated to pets, I ran across a Truman Capote quote somewhere in the last couple of days who said that, said that, Life was is a pretty good play with a very bad third act. <laughs> <laughs> I miss Truman Capote. <laughs> yes, we all miss Truman Capote. Uh, how will he? But he's been gone forever. Jeez, you know. He died relatively young, I think, in his fifties. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'd have yeah. to look it up, but I'm Here, pretty sure. But here's in his the 50s. thing about losing a pet. You know, people have said, and there have been people have said that that the two hardest things is to lose a parent and to lose a pet. Not a spouse? Well, a spouse, too. But, the, you know, they were talking, I guess, about people who are still okay. But, yeah, but that, that losing a pet is right up there with grief. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, there's that. I've forgotten the name of it, but there's a well-known psychological kind of inquiry. It's a list of of things that can go wrong in life, you know, that commonly go wrong in life with people, mm -hmm. and or right even, and each is assigned a relative number of how much it affects you, good or bad, or, or um, stresses you, and that whether it's good stuff like getting married or getting a new job, but also losing a spouse, a pet, all those kind. Of, it's a long list. It's twenty or twenty-five lists. Someone. Looking at this, will undoubtedly know the name of the list. I can't remember, but um, but certainly losing a pet is on the list. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. It, it to me, when I lost uh, Shabbos, uh, who was mm, our our good cat. Old Shabbos. Well, it was he was our cat. You know, yes. he was the one we got, and um, uh, I I grieved. I really grieved, you know, because here's the thing about about a, about a pet like Shabbos. He had spent 18 years with me. He was here for every major event in my life for 18 years. He Ooh. saw me when I was happy. He saw me when I was sad. He saw me, he saw, met all my girlfriends, <laughs> you know. Yeah. 
I yeah. mean, he had literally lived his life with me. And when he died, I said to myself, I can't believe that in 18 years, we never talked to each other verbally. But you understood each other. But yet I feel he talked to me constantly. Yes. You yes. know, and, and, and that's the amazing thing. There's a nonverbal relationship you have with a pet that after it's through, you go, I can't believe I never talked to him. <clears throat> You know, yeah, because I we, understand. We uh, I never thought had that thought before, but I get it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And um, Shabbos was very Zen and very special. I mean, I remember he was he was a super cool cat. I mean, I remember once having to take him across 14th Street in my arms. And oh you my would God! You would think a cat would go crazy. He was just really cool about the whole thing. He didn't budge. He just, hey, that's really nice traffic. Huh? Oh, that's, that's cool. That's interesting. You know, it was funny before you and I broke up. Um, by that, even that time, he wasn't anywhere near eighteen. Mm -hmm. He still was sleeping most of the time. Mm -hmm. And by then, we had a lady Siamese cat that we named well, Yanta, who was way, really uh, uh, a busy. Let me finish yeah. this, then you can go. Yeah. <laughs> She was really a busybody. And by then, even though he wasn't all that old yet, mostly he slept on the back of a certain chair in the living room. And Yadav, who always had things to do, would come trotting through the room, clearly on her way to do something. But she would always detour when he was sleeping there, always. She would detour past that chair, jump up, whack him in the head, and then go on about whatever yes. she was yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. She would do that when another cat would come into the house, like maybe we were cat sitting or something, and a cat would come into the house. She would go crazy, you know, because of, uh, yikes, another cat in the house. And what would she do? She wouldn't attack the cat that came in the house. She would go to Shabbos and beat the crap oh, out of him. Oh, poor Shabbos. <laughs> whap, whap, whap. <laughs> No. I have to say, and she was about half his size. She, she still... was. She uh, if if Shabbos was the best cat I ever owned, she was the worst. <laughs> and then there was poor dumb Bert who used to stare at the corners. In the yeah, yeah, we had a cat called Bert who stared at the corner. We had five cats total. <laughs> then there was one I had. I had. I think while we were still together, called Mouse. Yeah, Mouse was part of the same litter as Bert. And Mouse never got any bigger than a kitten. No, um, Mouse wasn't the same litter as the Bert. As Bert, she was, I think, the daughter of either Bert or Charlie, who was the other cat we owned. We owned so many cats, folks. No, there were only five. But there she, were only five. She, 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 um, she, there were two things. The, there, there, were, there were two things about uh, Mouse that were terrific. <clears throat> Number one, she was the one that would pee in the toilet. She taught herself to pee in the toilet. I don't remember that. Okay, that's You were cool. gone by then. But I was asleep one night with somebody there with me, I don't know who, and I hear something going on in the bathroom, some peeing going on. I'm going, we don't have a guest or anything. I go into the <laughs> I go in the bathroom, there's, there's there's nothing there. So I'm going, I'm thinking about, I'm I'm dreaming about something. Next night, same thing. I go in there, nothing, nobody there. But there are two little wet paw prints on ah. the toilet seat. And the third <laughs> night that it happened, I went in and I watched. Oh, I know. I was married to Susan at the time. And she used yeah. to sit there and watch Susan peeing with great intent. And so the night, that one oh, night. Oh, so she's figuring out what was going on. I yeah, can do that too. <laughs> one night I went in there and she's in there, she's peeing on the toilet. And I'm, and she always, for the rest of her life, peed on the toilet, which was wonderful. And people went, well, does she also poop in the toilet? And I said, you can't expect everything. Oh, see, I had a cat. My cat before, um, before Ollie, uh, I trained to use the toilet. And he did that for three years until I guess he just didn't like balancing on it anymore. And we had a few accidents, so I gave up, gave in and gave him a litter box. But, and he was happier. But for three years, he, I, you know, I trained him. There's, <laughs> you're gonna love this. There is a thing I bought that goes under the toilet seat. It's yeah. like a little, for little kids, you know, with babies, you need them, would teach them to use it. But this one was for training cats to use the toilet. And the name of the product was, are you ready for this? Kitty Whiz Transfer System. <laughs> Kitty I've Whiz Transfer forgot. System. Do you remember the jazz musician Charlie Mingus? Sure. He actually wrote a book on how to train your cat to, to shit in the toilet. Oh, did he? Yes, he did. He did. There, there's a method where you don't have to buy this kit, 
you know. But don't you love the name of it, Kitty Whiz oh, Transfer absolutely. System? But uh, <laughs> uh, the the uh, however, Shabbos was a very uh, Zen and and very wise, but he was also very stupid. And I'll, I'll re you may remember this. He used to always shit in the bathtub. Yes, I do. And for the for the eighteen years that he shit in the bathtub, every time he did it, he tried to dig it under. Yeah, well, never yeah. being able to uh, get even make a dent in the porcelain. But let me tell you a story about how smart he could be. When we lived in Riverdale, I was sitting on the sofa one night watching TV, and he liked to sleep on the top of the TV. They were bigger TVs in those days. Yeah. And he'd sleep on the top because it was warm. I'm sitting there perfectly happy watching some show, and all of a sudden, Shabbos falls off onto the floor, and he doesn't move. And I go, oh, my God. I go running up. And I, Should I touch him? Has he broken a bone? What's going on? He stood up, and he walked off. And then he turned around and looked at me and flicked his tail as if to say, screw you, yeah. and walked off. Okay, funny. So he's got a sense of humor. A week or two or some amount of time goes by. I'm again watching television. He again has got himself laid out on the top of the television set. Watching. Cats love the top of television sets. Yes, well, it's warm. Yeah. And, so, and again, he fell off and didn't move. And I didn't move. I said, you're not going to get me this time. You can just get up and get out of here on your own. You're not going to do this to me. But he didn't move. And he didn't move. And he didn't move. So finally, I got up. Maybe this time he hurt himself. He got off, walked off, flicked his tail at me again, <laughs> went off to have a snack or something. So he's not entirely stupid. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. But... Uh, he uh, he was he was he was Zen. He was my he was my Zen master. You know, he taught me what it was like to be terribly cool. You know, <laughs> right. and, and never let anything phase you. Except there were a couple of things that would phase Shabbos, and I, I think you remember this. Uh, you could take a rubber band and twang it, and he would start having a gag reflex. Oh, that I had thought about and that. And then in one all day, these years. One, You're right. one day I you, that. one day you were using an emery board on your nails, and the same gag reflex. So anytime we wanted him to start acting like he was gagging, we simply <laughs> took, we took an emery board and scratched it, or a rubber band and went twang, twang, twang. Why that brought out a gag reflex in this cat <laughs> is totally beyond me. You know, any two other people or any groups of other people would also have tons of stories like this, but different ones from their cats. Cats are weird. Yeah. They're just weird. Cats? Cats? I love cats. Oh, yeah, I, me too. And, and I love cats over dogs, oddly enough. I mean, I don't mind dogs, but, you know, you got to take them out and you got to collect their poop. Cats poop somewhere. You can put a you box know, down and they'll poop. I think I like dogs equally, especially medium-sized to big dogs, not those little teeny teacup dogs. But um, but I never wanted one, although I don't want one now, but certainly any other time, those 40 years I lived in New York, because you can never do anything. I can't tell you how many times at work somebody said, oh, let's go have a drink. And there would always be three or four say, sorry, I can't do it, got to go home and walk the dog. Yeah. And you always have to go home and walk the dog. <laughs> Well, you know, we're getting close to the end here. we got about three minutes, but I, I can't go without mentioning Charlie. Oh, who, wonderful old Charlie, Who yeah. was maybe the smartest cat I ever owned. Yeah. And what he would do, this uh, this was, I think, after you left. We I would sit there watching, I was in the bed, watching television, right? And Charlie mm -hmm. would come along, sit next to me, put his paw around my shoulder uh. and, and watch television with me. <laughs> Two guys just hanging back watching television. Just cooling out, <laughs> you know, watching TV, you know. And then the, the other story that I have is that, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, um, Yuntov was very, very, she was... I don't know. She always liked to get in the way of my life. And I'd be, I had to have a woman over for, you know, and I'm wooing her and she's in bed with me and I'm sitting in bed and we're talking, right? Mm. Yontif would come and sit right between us and look at, and look at me <laughs> with a look on her face like, don't you dare. <laughs> 
I mean, she was a cock blocker like no other. <laughs> so here, here's what we shared in our marriage, folks. This was the biggest part of our marriage were the cats we shared. Uh, I know? want to tell you just one thing before we go um, that I used in my post that I that is up right now about Ollie dying. Uh, many, many, many years ago when we were married and we were visiting your folks, um, your dad told me a story that on weekends, on Saturdays and Sundays, you know, the, their house was built on a hill so that the bedrooms, on reverse of most houses, the bedrooms were downstairs, the living areas were upstairs. Right. And and so I was just chatting with him. I don't know where you or your mother were, were but... Um, uh, he was telling me that on Saturdays, you know, he would have to practice a violin in the morning and she was doing whatever she was doing and they would do their things all day long and they might not see each other. Your dad is saying this from breakfast until dinner time. He said, but you knew there was another heartbeat in the house. I've never forgotten that. Yep. And that's how I feel. I feel now about missing Ollie, that that heartbeat is gone you know yeah it's always here no matter yeah. he was off you know he had a million sleeping places that god knows where he was he would come out when he felt like it yeah but i always knew there was another heartbeat it, in the there house there was another warm blooded thing in the house with you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and you know and now that you mention my father i i miss him almost as much as i miss shabbos so yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know Your dad I, was a great guy he was a great guy just a great died way too young hey listen we've run out of time and we okay. always did today was talk about cats <laughs> and, and 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 it's interesting that when we want to say well what do you and ronnie really have in common i mean it's been years since you've been divorced and whatever and all of a sudden i realized that what we had in common the most were these cats and and the well, cats there was stories. a long time where we didn't talk about anything except cats and the show period <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, it was a, it, yeah, it, this is a great relationship we have. That one, not so much. No, exactly. Not so exactly. much. Hey, thanks. Love talking to you, sweetheart. Let's do it in a couple of weeks, okay? All right. Have a good day. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. I love talking with my ex. Uh, she's so much fun, and I'm so sad about her cat because the cat did stay with me on several occasions, and I got to know Ollie pretty pretty well. Uh, and if you've never seen a serval cat, look it up. Very unusual animal. Very unusual. Anyway, I guess, let me see here. Let me close down my music here. Those are all the little themes and stuff I play and open up Skype. And then uh, hope that somebody calls, you know. Uh, and if nobody calls, then I get to go to sleep early. Anyway, um, what was I going to say? Uh, uh, yeah, give us a call. Uh, if you don't know how to call us, the best way to do it is for me to defer you to um, gabnet.net. Over at gabnet.net on the right-hand side of the page, it's a whole tutorial on how to be part of the citizens panel. Not complicated, very simple. You could probably do the whole procedure in a matter of minutes if you want to. I don't know whether to tuck my shirt in or out. There. You know what happens? I, I was saying this the other day. If I take this off watch, everything goes dimmer. Look at that. This, sh it, it, you know, when I have this on, because I have, you know, I have this on automatic for lighting uh, and somehow I can't just set it to a certain point and then I may play with it someday and get it to work without the automatic but when it's automatic watch 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 this watch the uh, video level go down look at that see see what I'm saying yeah off on video level down if I were to show this even more it would go down even more yeah so I can't I, I can't figure it out anyway Who's calling? Oh, what do you know? Uh, it's, uh, first of all, we've got Ray Renati. And then adding to the group, we've got, uh, we've got Phil. Uh, hello, Ray. Boy, you're on <laughs> early, you're on early uh, tonight, Ray. Wait a minute, yeah, uh, well, you know, I, I didn't want you to go to bed. Oh, no, no, no. 
Uh, and uh, there's there's <laughs> Phil. Somebody's got their audio up. Yeah, there it is. Better now? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, you and Phil uh, both have gray hair, and yeah. you both have uh, black shirts on tonight. Yeah, but the difference uh, is he's got hair. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, let me put it this way. He didn't pay for that hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to have to start putting product in to, to get it to, you know, clump up a little. Do you mind being bald? I mean, you know, at, at a certain point, uh, don't got, shouldn't guys just say, "Hey, okay, I'm losing it." You know, I mean, look at me. I I, say, I, 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 I am not in a state of denial any longer. Well, uh, I just don't have a great shaped head. I was a breech baby, and uh, the head was. Uh, I, I, it's a little more pointed you're on blaming, the top. You're blaming it on your mother's vagina. Is that what you're doing? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I came out running. Yeah. Uh, well, and actually, yeah, no, I didn't come out running. I came out head first. <laughs> well, my, uh, my, you, you know, you get, supposedly you get baldness from your uh, maternal grandfather. And yeah. my maternal grandfather was bald as a cue ball, I, you know. Well, so, father, so was mine, but I'm not bald. Uh, your yeah. maternal grandmother? Fa my maternal father, grandfather, grandfather was excuse. bald. Yeah. Really? But, I, but I'm not bald. Wow. Yeah, yeah, mine. My maternal grandfather uh, was bald, mm -hmm. but my father had a full set of. You know, he had a. Well, my father, yeah. my father didn't have a full set of hair, a full uh, head of hair. Head of hair, uh, yeah. But he because he had a widow's peak, but he had hair, you know. Yeah. But I didn't. Uh, that's not the side of the family that I got my baldness from. Now, here's what I want to know. Because we never asked this question. I've brought this up before. I've never gotten a real answer on this. And, and maybe somebody out there could answer it for us. And you uh, probably never will. Well, no. If we get our baldness, say, from our maternal grandfather, and maybe mm -hmm. there's several other traits like eye color and hair color and whatever that we get as traits from our, from our, uh, our, our relatives and so on, where does penis size come from? I'm not sure. Uh, you know why we don't know the answer to that question is because nobody wants to ask their father. Did you do you have a large penis, Dad, or did Grandpa have a large penis or what? Small penis? We never ask. I, I think it has to do with circulation. The better the circulation, the no. more that's there. No. Yeah. No. And <laughs> no, that has nothing to do with it, Phil. <laughs> That is fake news. That is fake news. Did you notice any difference once you lost weight, other than the fact you could then see it? But uh, no, no. But but but, but it's there's all, different it's kinds. There's the shrinking ones that grow big, and then there's the ones that just hang there and don't get much bigger. No, but I'm talking about the ones that erect are large yeah. or erect yeah. are little like you know thumbs oh i see yeah yeah Yeah. now where is that inherited because it's got to be inherited from somewhere it's a jewish thing jews have uh, more girth and uh you know they're, they're like a fire plug then how <laughs> come there aren't more jews in porn oh uh, well what's his name that friend ron of yours? jeremy is jewish isn't he ron jeremy is jewish yes yes yeah. you know. and he has a gigantic schlong Oh. Yeah, he speaks for all of us. And this is what our program is all about, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, but I, I often wonder where where does where does a big penis come from, you know, or a small penis? I mean, what where who who you know? I know where I got my baldness from, okay, but I don't know where I got my penis size, which I won't reveal to anybody, uh, although I'm not embarrassed by it. Um, where, where 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 do we get that from? Do you do you have any idea, Look Jeff? It up. Jeff, do you have mm. any idea? I just know from my father, but yeah, that's <laughs> is not uh, scientific information. I, well, I I think I may have gotten it from my father. I, I because I did see him once walking around the house with an erection. So I I do think <laughs> that it was my father, but I'm not sure. You know, it could be your maternal grandfather. You don't know, but nobody ever asked yeah. that question. Is 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 that what caused your penis envy thing when you saw your dad walking around? No penis envy. No, I've never had penis envy. Well, you you've got penis envy. No, I mean, I all you do is talk about penises. No, but I don't have penis envy. 
That's penis obsession, maybe, but that's not penis envy. <laughs> okay. Penis envy is when you don't have one and you wish you did. Uh, no, yeah. I've never been uh, dealt a, uh, shall we say, a bad blow that way, euphemistically speaking. Um, you know, but, I mean, I just always wondered about that. I mean, women, how about breasts? Right? Yeah. Some women have small breasts. Some women have very large breasts. And their mother may, I, you, you look at their mother and maybe they don't have the same kind of breasts. So where is that? Because all of this has got to be genetic on some level. Right? It's not just, oh, God dealt you. It's like a bunch of cards and he passes them out, you know? So what is the genetic proclivity to having a larger penis as a comparison to a smaller one? You know, what, what is it that, uh, that our genetics would cause us to want to have a larger or smaller one? Well, no, why is it that all, you know, when I was growing up, I don't know if you were the same way. I thought until I, I had a, you know, went to high school and we all had gym and we had locker rooms, I thought all penises were the same size. I didn't even think anything about size of penises. And, then, uh, and it really didn't become that big a thing because everybody was flaccid in gym, and if they weren't, you worried about them. Uh, and 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 so, um, but I never, I never really thought about penis size, even as, uh, into my twenties, and you know. Well, I just looked it up, and it, it says that your penis size can come from any of the males on your mother or father's side for several generations back. So you could just be given the penis, uh, you know, of grand, grand, old, great, great grandfather Fred, you know. Yeah. And you don't even know it. Man, yeah. no one ever saw it. So really, so it says it can be inherited from way back. Yeah, and from either your mother's or father's side. So yeah. basically, it's, it is genetic, but we don't know yeah. exactly from where. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Well. That that begins to solve the problem, not totally, yeah. not totally. Well, they'd have to do a, they'd have to do a big study, you know, and get a lot of money, from the government. I yeah. don't think Trump's going to fund that. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, you know something? <laughs> you know what I've done I, through this whole discussion? I have not turned on the panel. There we go. Look at that. Oh, really? Yeah, we I have, had, we've I just had been a, talking all nah, through. No, but nobody <laughs> watches this anyway, so, yeah. <laughs> that was for our own amusement? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 you've been on. Oh, oh, okay. You just have, your picture hasn't been on. It's just been me talking to you. Oh, okay. Because I, look, and I just noticed it because I was looking at the picture and I was going, gee, you know, I should mm -hmm. wear the shirt in because I look thinner than when I wear it out. Oh, there we are. Okay. So, anyway. There, there we go. Anyway, this is our our, our panel, folks. I've, I went for 15 minutes here, 12 minutes, 11 minutes without showing you guys. I, I'm just this is get. I'm getting too old. But we we still have 27 people watching. Uh, 25, 26. I don't know. It, yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, well, you know, uh, now that they can see you and less of me, I think yeah. probably it's going to be okay. But uh, <laughs> when you were. When you were on the radio, you used to have a live studio audience. Did you ever get 27 in the studio? Oh, yeah. I've got, I've got had hundreds. Oh, yeah. Like at the punchline sometimes? You'd have those Oh, big no, no. Things? I was talking about at the radio station. The radio oh, okay. station once. I mean, I remember once we did a show in which we had um, uh, Jackie Chan was on it. And uh, who was the singer? Uh, I'm trying to remember her name now. But the girls really, women really loved her. I'm trying to remember the name of the singer. Right? Cindy Lauper? No, 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 no. But anyway, and Jackie so Chan, biased. and between the two of them, we had people lined up out the block. Wow. And, and around the corner trying to get in to see this. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the only time I went to your 105 studio, it was still sort of under construction. Most of the time I spent in the studio with you was a camel, and there was, uh, you know, was no place other than the other well, studio. We, that's when we first brought in a studio audience, though. We actually let people just come up and just stand around yeah. and watch the show being done. That's how the, the studio audience started to happen. And then when I moved to uh, the Quake, they built me a studio that could accommodate people. And then, when we, then, when, then when I moved to 
Live 105, we, they, we, we put chairs in the studio, but it was, it was a difficult slog. And finally, uh, we moved into that big building, and they built me a studio that actually could accommodate a studio audience. Which, which place were you that had that AP machine that was out, uh, you know, just outside the studio? Uh, had, 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 had a, an AP machine? I, I can't remember. That, I oh. mean, that's where we got our news from, Associated yeah. Press. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, uh, that was the last one I was in. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, let me see here. I'm, I'm thinking. Uh, uh, so, it, yeah, and, we, and in that studio that they built, uh, Live 105, they built a huge window that could be slid open so we could sit people behind that so we could actually, we could fit about 50 to 75 people in there. Yeah. So, well, then, if you think of it as your live studio audience, and you got 27 viewers right now, that's uh, just an electronic version of the studio. Yeah, but I also had 30,000 people listening to me on the radio. <laughs> There's a slight difference. <laughs> well, in other words, it, you know, over, I, over I, the I week. basically I basically come in here every night, look at the numbers of people listening, and say, "So it's come to this, huh?" I think part of my problem is there's so many other places you can get this after the fact and see my picture on for the first 12 minutes of the show. There's so many places you can go after we're through that a lot of people aren't even compelled to listen to it when it's broadcast live. Yeah. In fact, I don't know if people are that used to listening to stuff live. You know, I was mentioning to girlfriend that Saturday nights uh, on, on, on Saturday nights or Sunday nights, we would uh, go out of our way to watch something on HBO because that was the only time it played, right? Or, or it played again during the week. But, you know, hi, hi Rob. Hi, Patrick. Um, glad you could join us. And now people can actually see members of the studio audience because I'm not being selfish. There we lost Rob again. Rob what? What? He's having some problems tonight. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Hey, um, uh, I, I've got a... Well, wait a minute, uh, let me finish uh, what I was saying. Now I forgot what I was saying. No, we're talking about 30,000 oh, people. Well, well, I'm saying that, that, that we, were, we were talking about the fact that when there'd be a show on HBO, we would go out of our way on a Saturday night or a Friday night or a Sunday night to watch the show because it was on then. Oh, hey, it's 9 o'clock. They probably already started it already. But now, you, you know, who watch? I don't. Do you watch HBO or do you watch HBO Go? I watch all my stuff on HBO Go. I watch my stuff the same way I used to. I don't know if it's pre-recorded, but I know that it's coming on at a certain time, and I want to sit down and, and listen to CNN news. I go to that channel. Uh, I don't record it, and then well, the go DVR back. came along and changed that because then you could record it and say, well, we don't have to watch it at, at a particular time, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. If there's if there's a network show I want to watch, I record it because when you get the playback, they mm -hmm. force you to watch the commercials, and then sometimes they cut off the actual show on the playback. So I I record those, but on HBO, I just watch the go. I just watch the. Don't ever try you know. to record sixty minutes. Because they've always got a football game or something going on before it, and that always runs over, and they never know how much it's going to run over. And if it runs over the time when they think that 60 minutes has to start, that means the, you won't see the end of 60 minutes. So you have to record the show after it as well so that you get all of 60 minutes. Fuck you, CBS. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to drop my CBS on demand. I don't think I've looked at it in six months. Uh, you know, they see all okay. access. CBS. Okay, now wait a minute. Here's Rob. Rob, what's your problem in tonight? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So it's back. Yeah, I, what my problem is is um, Skype uh, downloaded a new thing, and it looks completely different again, and all the settings were off, so I couldn't hear you or anything like that, and now the camera's all zoomed in because... Yeah. Yeah, my Skype's a mess. Like, I see everybody well except for Rob, who's all zoomed in for no reason whatsoever. There you go, Rob. Yeah, that's yeah. that's from what I did this afternoon when I was playing. Oh, yeah. With, I wound up using the OBS tool. Still no good. So, so you like the OBS, huh? Yeah, I, I that, that webcam.io site that I found yeah. worked great until I went to render it. 
And then it just sat there and sat there and sat there because it was like a six minute long video that I had to record. It never gave me yeah, a finished yeah. product. So. But OBS is great. You know, you know, what is it? OBS is it's what I use here to switch the program and everything. Open broadcaster Studio. I think. It's it, it's uh, it, it's not a, it's a very good simple program. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles it could have, and it probably will because it's an open source program and people will keep adding to it. Uh, but it's what we use, and that's where, you, like when I want to put up uh, GabNet Live, let me see here, let me, let me see right there, like that. Uh, I, can, I can do things like that, and I can run my animations for like uh, GabNet and things like that. And, you know, run your pictures and then go back and forth between your picture and my picture. And so cool. today, uh, Rob called me because he had a he had a project he had to do for work, uh, kind of a study project in a way, right? Or uh, I can't. Not a study project. It was, um, uh, you know, they want us to be able to speak about this product, so they gave us a video challenge that we all had to do a five minute. What yeah. they call an elevator pitch on it. Yeah. So I decided rather than stare at a camera like this and talk to it, I would do it as a mock radio interview. Yeah. So I sat here and I uh, I did it into this microphone with this camera on, and I actually used a teleprompter. I I downloaded. I actually went to a free called Easy Prompter. Yeah. And I put my script in there, and you would never know I was reading it because. You know, it's right here in this monitor, right below the camera up here. Right. So, right. So did the I've been thinking about using something like that for my daily break, but I have to also run the OBS as well. If you're just doing one single shot, it's it's perfect. But if you've got to move stuff in and out and so on and so forth, and you know, so. Um, well, I, well, I, I can uh, scroll the mouse with the little scroll thing, and yeah. the prompter moves with for you. Yeah. It was very simple yeah. but when you're doing a bunch of other stuff yeah so that was his assignment for today it, jeff yeah. we lost your picture uh really yeah turn your camera went off yeah turn it back on yeah i have i have the weirdest problem like I, when more weird. than two people come on yeah uh one, i always have one person that's totally zoomed in so much i could bear all i see oh is that's like that's because the... are you using are you using uh, a pc yeah. Uh, go back onto Skype, and if you go searching around, you can find Skype Classic. Oh, okay. Uh, I will tell you, though, that... Uh, oh, this is the Microsoft one? Yeah. yeah well, no, they this have a thing that. called Skype Classic that Microsoft allows you to download, which is the old form that doesn't do okay. all that crap. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm going to get that. I tell you, the, 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 I just, you know, when I came onto my computer today, I hadn't used it in a week. And, you know, it went through all of its updates and it said, you know, Windows is installing new updates. Sit back, relax. It's like, you know, S sit back and relax while we fuck up your machine. Yeah. But then I, you know, I hadn't used Skype, so I just launched Skype. Then it, oh, we're going to put another Skype on there. And there's no escaping that anymore. There's no no. It's like once you click on the, the icon on your desktop, it says, we're doing this. So. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I uh, like this better than the other one. Well, they did it, wait a minute, they did it with mine, saying that you were going to upgrade you. But because I have the Skype Classic, it upgraded me to a newer Skype Classic, okay? So, and I found on another machine that I could actually install both the new Skype and Skype Classic and decide which one I want to launch. So, yeah. I'll yeah, tell you here. Head that this version of Skype is now 12.1815.209.0 and yeah. it's brand new and that problem of only being able to put certain amount of screens then you get the circles yeah. is gone. Now I have everybody on the screen. Oh really? Yeah. Oh okay. The, uh, the reason I haven't gone to the new one is be is is the it, it, well also there's a couple other reasons too. I think there's a, there's a problem there but Wait a minute. What is the uh, what is the one that I have? Uh, the current uh, version that I have. Oh, John Perulis is calling. Let me see I also here. Have the ability to if I click on everybody, I get a little. If I if I mouse over your picture, yeah, 
there is a, a little icon that appears in the center, and I can go from a 4x3 format to a 16x9 format. It switches. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Well, I, I may have to check that on the other machine and see what yeah. uh, what that's all about. By the way, uh, what what is the version you have, you say? This one here? Yeah. Is about about this version. It's 12.1815. Uh, yeah. yeah. See the one yeah. nine uh, dot zero. Uh, the one that I have, I have is the one I have is 7.41.0.101 and that's the Skype classic. Yeah. Which you can download. I mean, there's a if you go there, you, you drill down enough, you get to a, a point where you can. Uh, it says what, which one do you want? And you hit a click a thing, and a menu comes down. And at the very bottom, it says Skype Classic, and yeah, you I can install it. that. You found Skype already, Classic? Yeah, I, I downloaded it now. Yeah. 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 So. So hey. Rob, I have the same version as you, and I'm having problems with it. Like uh -huh. you, like right now, you're all I can see is your right ear, and your printer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happens to me sometimes. No, this yeah. is the first time. This is the first time with this version. I'm able to see everybody. There are six of you on my screen, mm -hmm. which I never had before with this newer version. They were little circles. Oh, there were right. four, and right. then everybody else is a little circle, and you could drag those little circles down, and make them part one of the four. But yeah. that would put one of the other people back in the circle. So. Yeah. I, I don't see Phil on my screen. I, I just see a picture, a frozen picture of Oliver North. Oliver North. <laughs> no, you're lying, <laughs> Mr. Perulis. Uh, now, my uh, Mac version is 7.59 parentheses 37. Uh, and it says it's the most up to date. Well, there's so, Phil. Maybe it's time you all went back to the Mac. I'm going to use my Mac now, from the, from now on. Yeah. I don't want to pollute my Mac. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're losing 27 viewers. We should start talking about Stormy Daniels running for Senate. And oh, Louisiana. yeah. Talking about her attorney uh, filing many, many bankruptcies and uh, owing the government back taxes and $10 million to his partner. It, it looks like he's not going to have a nice day. But uh, I have wait, some. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What? I check <laughs> all the news every day. I check all the news every day. And I have seen nothing about that. I just so, saw it. Uh, where, yeah, where did you see it? Uh, on the news feed on my phone. Uh, I, I, and uh, maybe it was called Vox. Let me, let me see. Uh, it, the story. I love how, how he yells fake news and then he believes the fake news. CNN has fake uh, news. I, I, I have standard NBC and stuff like that. CNN uh, says here, a law firm representing Stormy Daniels hit with $10 million judgment. A law right. firm. Law firm. Not, law uh, oh, oh, you know him. That may be the old law firm. What law it's firm in, is it? In California. Judge orders firm of Stone, Stony Daniels attorney Stormy to pay $10 Daniels. million dollars in judge. What did I say? But Stormy. he personally... Uh, is on the hook for that because he he guaranteed it personally. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But what are they? What what has the judgment been for? Did it have anything to do with the Stormy Daniels case? No, it's bankruptcy right. court judge. Uh, da, 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 who were the judgment comes after Avenetti's firm Egan Avenetti LLP failed to make the first payment on a four point eight five million dollar settlement with lawyer Jason Frank, a one time partner at the firm. During Tuesday's hearing, a lawyer for the federal government. Also said Avenetti's firm failed to make a payment back for back taxes that was due last week. And, and, and it was payroll taxes that he deducted from his employees and didn't pay to the government. Yeah. Okay. Those are 941 taxes, and those are not excluded. But still, no matter what you're, what, what you're saying about all of this, doesn't mean Avenatti is wrong. Well, he is, Avenatti's on the hook for this stuff personally, he signed no, personally. So who cares? It doesn't affect It, it doesn't make him any less creditable. He needs money. Right. No, but it doesn't mean he's any less credible. And you think he's making money off Stormy Daniels? You're you're nuts. Uh, he's getting advertising. No, no, but he's not. He's not. He's not getting. I, I'm sure it's all pro bono on his part, or pro uh, yeah. pro, pro boner. Bono. You know. <laughs> hey, talking about a boner. Uh, well, wait a minute. Know, Hold on a second. Just, you, why do you want to change the topic? We're on a topic now. Huh? 
It was boring. No, it's boring because you're overstating what it is. It has to no, do with the law. He stated exactly what it was, and he's on the hook for it personally. You didn't know what Just it was until Rob read it to you. I knew what it was. I read the same thing Rob read, except I didn't remember it as well <laughs> because it was earlier in the day. I think Stormy Daniels looked pretty good in her senatorial uh, campaign pose. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I hadn't seen Why that. is she running, though, is what I don't understand. I, I think she's going to get some votes. I think she's going to get she's some. She's going to get some votes. So would I. You know. <laughs> uh, I, I did a plug for you on Facebook, Alex. Did you see that? What? I did, did a plug for you. How, well, how'd you do a plug for me? I on Facebook. I uh, for all my friends, all four hundred something of them. Oh are, well, were. it certainly worked because there are only twenty six people watching right now. <laughs> we lost one. I've done it a couple times. I don't think it did. Yeah, anything. yeah, that's right. I got Skype Classic now. This is great. Oh, so you now you got it. It's like the old Skype, right? Yeah, it works. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. See, I told you. I, I told you. And, and somehow I find... Yeah, you're looking a lot better, Ray. I, 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 find, kind of I find that you it. can install both of them on the same machine. You may, you in can't. fact, have the other one installed right now and not know it. Yeah, I'll probably have to go you, later and you, try to uninstall it. Well, no, just go look at all your lists of all your programs, and there may be two Skypes there, and one is the classic and one is the other one. She was on my PC yeah. version. Yeah. So, yeah. No, hey, no, this is the classic because it closed my other one and, yeah. and started this one. Yeah, yeah it may have closed it, it, but it still may be on your computer is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I have to so. get rid of it. Um, well, you don't hey, have to. Does anybody here still uh, uh, partition their hard drives and have, like, Linux going and w the Windows? Linux? No. I never had Linux in any of my computers, ever. No, me too, yeah. So why should I? You know, I don't, I don't want to, you know. Patrick looks like a Linux guy, right, Patrick? You know who's a Linux guy? Oh, wait, 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 wait you, I asked him a question, Phil. <laughs> he said no. Trump's Please. a Linux guy. Uh, 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 you look like a Linux guy to me. Have you ever used it? Uh, yes, I have. I have a friend of mine who was, well, probably still would be, a uh, big computer geek, mm. and he would build computers just for fun and then you know i played around on his computer so yeah so and he had linux as in far it. as it would get with me yeah is that called well, red hat well now i uh yeah. i have Ooh, linux I'm i use linux. linux all the time i use well linux is unix yeah well, and i use it? and i oh, use and i, and I use unix all the time you know why because it's the major it's, kernel in in the Mac. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, am I right? That's correct. That's yeah. right. Right. Yeah. Hey, at Burning Man 2003 or four, in my camp, was one of the creators of the Linux system. I forgot his name, and he told me a funny story. He's uh, he said, "How do how do you think we got it off the ground?" And I said, "I have no idea." And he said, "Porno." He said, "All the porno guys came to us." And uh, we, we were able to did. set them up, and uh, that was our payment, you know. For We got, uh, you know, uh, startup funds or something from them. Oh, no, they didn't get blowjobs? Probably that, too. Well, I mean, you know, and, you know what kind of businessmen are they? <laughs> yeah. you know. So Linux, Linux got started by uh, porno. <laughs> Most of the Internet got started because of porno. <laughs> well, no, actually, actually, you're quite right. Um, you're quite right. Uh, uh, because Rob, Rob because um, uh, most of the things that have had a, gone ahead in recent times have always been because of porn. I mean, porn was the, when the, uh, videotape first came out. You know, they had all these videotape stores where you could rent movies. Oh, yeah. uh, six, I never. What there. was it? Sixty-five percent to seventy percent of all rentals were porn. Those were behind okay. the curtain. They right. they they drove they drove uh, uh, VCR sales, and then when DVDs came out, guess what drove DVD sales? Porn. Absolutely. So porn has always driven these things initially. Then eventually, the public in general gets used to them and gets to know them, 
and before you know it, uh, you know, old Jed's a millionaire. You remember yes. uh, Captain Video? Now that, that, yes. Uh, the, that that was, guy who owned that used to date, I think her name was Carol. She was a sales girl. Yes, Carol. I know. I know him very well. He was yeah, one of the that, original that, founding members with me and Bobby Slayton of the He-Man Woman Haters Club. Well, <laughs> when things were still going good. but That's uh, from, uh, uh, but he had a bunch of stores. He did really Little well. Rascals. No, he only had about one store at the time, and then he yeah. sold out, and they tried starting other stores. But I think I rented videos from Captain Video. Mm -hmm. I think I remember yeah, Captain that. Video did a very good business. Yeah. Dollars for, and fifty for, cents for a short period of time. You know. Yeah. But yeah. you know who rents videos anymore? I mean, <laughs> uh, who? I don't know why they, they still still sell Blu-rays and DVDs when most of this stuff is being sold and distributed on on, on video files. Did you miss? Yeah. You don't get any of the other content though. So if you really want it and you oh, want to oh, see, oh, but the, you do. The, you do. The, I haven't seen it on the street. Have, have you ever rented anything? A movie like a, a major movie that just came out, for instance? Yeah, on from, Apple TV all the time. From I well, from if you buy it on iTunes, well, you usually, buy. usually it has all the extras that you would uh, find on the disc. See, I don't buy yeah. it; I would just rent yeah. it. I just yeah. stream it once, and that's it. Yeah, I don't. I never bought anything. I never stream them. I found other ways of laying my hands on them. So. <laughs> I, I just buy collector DVDs, you know, things that I think are going to be classic. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. They'll be worth a lot. Well, I just binge watch <laughs> one of the worst series. Uh, What's that? Cobra Kai. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's the remake of Karate Kid. I heard it was good. Uh, it, it, it's drivel. <laughs> you know, after, yeah. after all of those episodes, I just I said to myself, you know, I wasted my time. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I have a DVD here. I don't know where it is right now. It always eludes me every now and then. Uh, it, it, there are very few DVDs that I have ever owned that in any way became worth something later on. This one, for some reason, is is worth a bloody fucking fortune. And oh, it's called... I've got to check my stash. It, it, what, 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 do you want to make sure it's still there? Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> don't roll it too tight. Yeah, That's where he hides his stash. stash. I'm to yeah. if, I it, if I have it here, hold on a second. He literally means he's going to check his stash. Yeah, you know. Everyone's fine. checking their stash. Here it is. Hey, Phil, you should show a photograph. What? I have a stash. Uh, this is, let me uh, 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 switch it over to my camera. Uh, this is Cinema Europe. And what this is, uh, Kevin Brownlow and David Gill uh, are great historians of film. And uh, they, uh, they did a thing called Hollywood the Pioneers, which was a, uh, uh, just an epic uh, history of, of, of film, uh, of silent films. And um, they, um, uh, in fact, if you have a copy of Hollywood the Pioneers, it's worth something too, because what happened is as years went on, the rights to the films, which they had gotten the rights to when they ran it, the rights ran out, so they couldn't resell the episodes, okay? But Cinema Europe, which f has the same problem, is the history of European silent cinema. European silent cinema. And I bought this copy because I love this thing. I think it ran me, oh, I don't know, 25 bucks, 30 bucks, something like that. They took it out of circulation. It's been out of circulation for many years. I looked online to see what you could buy it for on Amazon. You can buy it from a third party, and it's going for $300. Yeah, you know, uh, I ran into that issue with uh, old Disney films. You know, I, I wanted to start a, uh, you know, collect them, and you can't get the... Uh, Scarecrow of Romney Marsh with Patrick McGowan, very young Patrick McGowan, uh, for a, a less than three hundred bucks. You yeah. know, v, an old VHS copy. So, yeah, I think mm -hmm. so, some things. I hope my Egyptian copy of uh, the Egyptian <laughs> earned some money. This is a cool film. The, the, I, the Egyptian know? was a very good film. Edmund Purdom. Yeah. 
Gene and, Simmons and Gene, Gene, uh, Sim Gene Turney. Yeah, and, uh, and Peter Ustinov. Yep. Was it yep. in the Egyptian? Yeah, I liked it. It was always a good film, but it, that that copy you got ain't worth shit. <laughs> well, it's a VHS. Uh, well, that's why it really isn't worth shit because uh, there are cleaner copies of it. I have yeah. one, uh, but uh, I, I bought DVDs like crazy for years, and what a waste of money that was now. <laughs> you know, and I put a lot of them on onto uh, uh, what do you call it? Onto let me get my Mash. let me get my picture out of the, the, these things. out of, out of uh, oh, Ray Renati's face here. I gotta adjust the SDAC video. chip. You can put about twenty movies on this thing. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, I mean, yeah. So I mean, I have uh, taken. Uh, there's a whole area here that's blank, and I've taken a lot of my DVDs and put them onto files. Because, you know, there's no reason not to, you know. Uh, eventually, the DVDs are going to go bad anyway. I mean, yeah. they'll probably be long dead when they do, but, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, they will go bad eventually. Uh, and files can go bad, too. That's why uh, I back up every drive I have with another drive of stuff I care about. like the film, Smart man. My, my film supply. Yeah. Do you yeah. uh, do you use that f some kind of free uh, decryption software right, for the DVDs, or do you just put the files back up the files? There are a lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, decryptors that you can use, and they're not illegal yeah. particularly. And it's not illegal yeah. for you to make a copy of a film you own. Oh, I know. You know. Yeah. So, um, uh, but um, uh, there are there have been sometimes I couldn't decrypt it because somehow there was some kind of thing on it that wouldn't allow me to do it that's interesting decrypting software uh yeah you know, i use it all the time you know because i have this interview that i wanted to make a copy of and uh i couldn't because uh it it, it wouldn't let me uh, it, it's I, called drm digital rights management that that's what they refer to uh encryption as you know it's a software thing that goes on to the disc yeah. Oh, okay. Like but there's all kinds of apps out there. People have written to decrypt the that, and it w usually works. Yeah. Yeah. There are ways around everything. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, 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 most of the time. Um, but the point the point that I guess I'm uh, making. I tell you, I was I was watching an interesting documentary that was on. Uh, where was I watching? It was that on? It was either on Netflix or Amazon. And it was a documentary that a former porno actress in Europe made about the porn industry and how it's been completely, you know, they just don't make the money they used to make. You know, they claim they're a billion, multi-billion dollar industry. Well, they would be if everything they made wasn't pirated. <laughs> you know, I mean, who ever heard of paying for fucking porn? Who pays for porn? Well, uh, no, nobody pays for porn, but what this documentary is about is how when the bottom started falling out of porn, some people moved in and took over. You know, in the old days, porn was run by the mob, okay? And they, they, they controlled the game. And then when uh, it, it didn't become a moneymaker like it was and as illicit as it was, uh, that went away, and the individual companies were doing stuff. Well, all of a sudden, there was this guy in Europe, and I can't remember his name now, and he came up, he made his money by coming up with a scheme where it was a little harder for people to steal stuff. Uh, and he started buying up all these porn companies. <laughs> And he had backers, and the backers finally pushed him out, and now they own everything that's out there, practically. No matter what porn you watch, it's probably owned by these guys. So and, even the porn industry is consolidating. Yes, but, <laughs> but they give it away for free. Now, you're wondering how they make money. What they do is they run things like RedTube wow. and... Uh, uh, porn hub and things like that where you can watch all this porn for free but there are also ads in there there's also stuff that comes up that you got to click through to get to watch something and before you're through they make a lot of money off of people buying shit and they but they run the whole business 
and uh, it's taxi? it's scary. What? On fake taxi, do they actually collect the fare? Oh, by the way, they own <laughs> they they own fa- they own they own fake taxi too. They own all I love those. That show. They, yeah, me too. Are, what, are you what? talking about the porn fake taxi it's, or the one yeah, the porn HBO. fake taxi? <laughs> oh, I see. it's if you want to watch a video of a woman fucking uh, the cab driver, then that's your fare, okay? Oh, or his fare. Yeah, or or you could watch Uber Uber films. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, 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 but this really? company, this company, I'm trying to remember, it's out of, they run out of Canada, but they've also got a, a they've got a, 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 a headquarters in Belgium. But if you go to the building, there's nothing in there. <laughs> and, <laughs> and most of this is being run. You can't find these people, but they're making all this money and they're running literally the porn game. If you're making a porn film, Basically, you're making it for these guys. I see. Is that what Howard does? Uh, Howard Levine? No, is- Howard worked for like Vivid, but Vivid probably in some way is is in league or is paying these guys. I'm trying to remember. They have a they have a name for the main name for their company uh, now. And um, watch the documentary. It's called Porn Something or Another. It's, it's on. I think it's on Amazon, if I'm not mistaken. And it's it's really fascinating about how this business has gone from being a mob-run company to a, another kind of mob-run business. You know. Hey, hey Alex, I, I heard that, uh, and man, this was about ten years ago, so maybe it's changed. But uh, some of the biggest distributors of porn mm-hmm. are, are Comcast and the cable companies because. Uh, they have these uh, pay-per-view things for Absolutely. hotels. And, 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 Absolutely. And, and, and they make millions yeah. of dollars, are these cable companies, wow. off of porn. Yeah. Wow, that's really interesting. Well, they, I, it, I wonder it, how they tax that. No matter who your porn, your porn company is, no matter who your cable company is, you can buy porn on that ca- cable system. And these systems also, in various markets, feed into the hotels. And that's where all the porn from the hotels is distributed. You're quite you right. You make tons of money. I had a, I had I knew a guy who worked at the Waldorf Astoria, and he ran the videos uh, uh, there. In, in the old days, they had you know machines and uh, and you know he ran that and and the porn. Mm-hmm. That, Back uh, in the eighties, I worked for the Playboy Channel, and I used to run the master control for the playboy channel back around it was 85 i think 85 to 88 and uh then like one day a month i would do a special f- satellite uplink to hotels uh-huh. and we would link all the movies to them so i'd run all the movies in a in a and and it would they would get downloaded by the hotels so they can provide the uh on demand stuff that you guys or any guys whatever uh-huh. pay for it uh-huh. Did you have to watch these movies? Were yeah, you first absolutely. To watch these? Well, oh, if, if it was that's, Playboy, that's though, disgusting. if I'm not mistaken, if it was Playboy, it on the air. wait a minute, <laughs> if it was Playboy, it wasn't hardcore stuff, was it? No, down the hall, we had an edit suite <laughs> where we were cutting all the cum shots and the hard dicks out of the all of the films. And so then each film probably then <laughs> ran about a minute and a half, didn't it? Yeah, no, yeah. they would take and they would loop it. They would they would create the editors would do was all CMX editing, uh, yeah. would would uh, create loops, yeah. and it was you know boring to watch. But I you know I used to like you know Sex Cetera, the news according to Playboy, and there was some some shows. Yeah, but that then were there were other companies like Larry Flint who actually were putting hardcore porn into hotels. Uh, the one place that I saw porn in a hotel because I never ordered it up. I mean, it, why I can get it anytime I want it, right? Uh, yeah, but blue. But, but uh, I went to a hotel in, uh, in Greece, in Athens, and uh, they had a porn channel on their in-house TV. So I decided, what the hell, I'll see, I want to see some good Greek porn. You know, I didn't, <laughs> what is Greek porn like? Lots of hair. Right? Lots of hair, right. So <laughs> I, 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 entry. So I, so I order up one of these films that has some kind of title or something, and I put it on, and uh, yeah, it's in Greek. 
but it's Ron Jeremy fucking somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, I came all this way to see Ron Jeremy's dick. Give me a break. And I went to the Parthenon and hung out for the day. You know, I mean, it, it just, uh, it very disappointed. Very disappointed. Uh, so, uh, anyway. But, it, you know, I mean, it, it's a fascinating documentary about what has become to the, happened to the business where women used to get paid incredible amounts of money, you know, $5,000 a shoot, you know. And now they're lucky if they get like $800 for a shoot. You know, wow. the price has just completely dropped out for the bottom of porn. Well, well, well yeah. Rob, when Rob, when you were uh, up uplinking to a satellite, that must back in the '85. You said that must have been frightfully expensive. I mean, it, even in today's dollars, no, it was, dollar, it was it's frightfully kind of it was frightfully cheap. It, I mean, it, expensive for who? The well, the company. No, well, they lease time no, on the satellite. Hold on a second. Yeah, we had, I you know, was yeah. back in. We had, Huge uplink facility. We did yeah. sports out of there. We did. Oh, oh yeah. so, when yeah. I was uh, when I was doing Midnight Blue, we just talked to a company who had a had satellites, and nobody was really using the satellites much then. That was early. On. And yeah, yeah uh, this was in the in the oh let's say uh, late seventies. Okay, yeah. and. Um, uh, they wanted to send, sell, literally sell us a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week transponder for like $300 a week. Wow. They really you, wanted people. You remember? Yeah, they really wanted stop. people. And we said, and I went to Al Goldstein, who was backing Midnight Blue and had the money, and said, do you want to buy it? And she, he said, no. What, what was the satellite going to be? Yeah. <laughs> well, if we if we if we rented that transponder, let me tell you an interesting story about transponders. You, you know the story of Jim Baker and how he got busted and how he his big downfall with the PTL club and all of that. Praise the Lord! But you don't realize that the whole thing was a fight over transponder. What <laughs> happened was is that he was the smartest guy in the room of these morons these religious morons he got into it early enough and he got himself a transponder and he was broadcasting ptl and all variety of shows tammy Faye's uh house party things like that you know 24 7 and he had literally the tv business to himself because he had all these trans this one transponder they all wanted that transponder, and he wouldn't sell them time on it. So one thing led to another, and, and, and uh, Falwell wound up with the transponder because first they got him into trouble. Then he wanted to get bailed out by Falwell. Falwell said, give me everything you own, and I'll give, as, as long as this is going on, and then when it's over with, I'll give it back to you. He never gave it back to him, and guess what he got in the bargain? The transponder. And that, his, his whole downfall was because he had a transponder that could brought, and by that time, satellite delivery had become a major deal, okay? And yet he was the only one of them that owned, literally owned a transponder on a satellite. There were people that rented them, like that Dr. Gene Scott. Well, yeah, no, we know that. But I'm James saying Scott. he literally yeah. he 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 bought the rights to a transponder in the very beginning, and it was into perpetuity. Mm. That's a fascinating the, story. Yeah, it is. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Did how about the farting minister? Did he have a transponder? The farting, the minister. farting minister. Oh, have you never seen those videos? No. Oh well, you have to look. You have to look on YouTube. Somebody. This guy, he talks in tongues, and every time he makes a face, there's like a someone inserts a fart sound. Oh, I it's see. The, oh, it's not it's, real. Him. No, no, but it's hilarious. Because it's I, so I would, I would pay to get uh, on my cable system a channel with the farting. Uh, <laughs> if it were for real, you know. Yeah, you never know. But anyway, so these transponders, you know, I, I was amazed. I mean, I remember how cheap we were offered a transponder twenty four seven. 
uh, for and 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 what eventually and I finally, I think one day I did say to Goldstein, "Aha, uh-huh, you never listened to me. You never listened to me. Mm-hmm. You're like you're like WMCA when I told him I got the rights to do live broadcasting from this uh, music festival that's being held in upstate New York, <laughs> and uh, all we have to do is put a line in there." And they told me, well, what's the Woodstock Festival going to be? Mm. Uh, you know, yeah. Hey, it just realizing. got historical status. If you go there right now, there's a, you know, a, a yeah. federal yeah. Uh, historical but, but uh, if you if, if, yeah, if you had a line in the, in the Woodstock, <clears throat> it would have been the only broadcast line into Woodstock. You would yeah. have made yeah. a fucking fortune over that weekend. Yeah. Didn't you say that there were other people that had lines there because they were no. doing news? No. <laughs> no, I said no. there were news people there with their pens and their typewriters. Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought you said there was one line going in. No, I'll there say, wasn't. It would, have to have been an, it would have to have been a broadcast phone line. Yeah, it's a broadcast NBC phone line. line. Yeah, I- ISDN. Right. No, it wasn't. Well, that was yeah. long before ISDN. Yeah, was it would have been yeah. a t- for music. It would have been like a 10kc or a 5kc yeah, we, line. We, well, we we had to put a line in there, which cost money. You could order them up fast because if it was a rush job and it was something important like that, you could do it. But I I let them know two weeks before it was going to happen. That and, would have been tough to order up, huh? Yeah, but that would have been tough to we, get we, in. You no, know, we could have ordered it up. I, I remember whatever time li- amount of time that I had. Maybe it was a month. Because I, what happened was I, I had the people who were running the festival on my show, and I said, "Could I do my show from up there if I can run a line in there? Will you give me the the ability to run a line in there?" And they said, "Absolutely." Jeez. And no one, no other radio station, nope. rock station, nope. thought to do that. Nope. Nope. Wow. Think I think that. maybe I was the only radio guy there. Wow. Well, wasn't Woodstock sort of a big surprise in terms of how popular it was? Well, was it, it, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it, it, it started off as a pay thing, and then people just crashed it, and it got over Well, I, I, there's, there's yeah. a famous piece of uh, footage, um, uh, television footage of Bill Graham. Uh, and the promoters of the festival, once this influx of people came, it's so many of them came that it became impossible to charge everybody to get in. Yeah. Okay, and and uh, Bill Graham is standing there saying, "Well, the only way you're going to prevent them from getting in here is you dig a deep pit and set it on fire." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, it uh, actually. It, it, a lot of people talk about Woodstock and say how wonderful Woodstock was. Actually, Woodstock was a massive failure. Was it? Oh, well, they made any money on it, but it didn't was... make any money on it. I mean, it, it you know, it, it people were slogging around in mud. The only yeah. thing that you remember of Woodstock, I mean, that you really remember of Woodstock, are the performances, and that's because they had cameras there rolling all the time as people attempted to perform in this. Uh, uh, in, in what was this gigantic clusterfuck? They they used uh, Eclair NPRs to uh, film the event. I think that's the first time that camera, the 16 millimeter documentary camera, came uh, online. And uh, I took a course uh, years ago from Stephen Hill. I think he's a he was a president of the Actors Union at one time, and uh, he was one of the cameramen. Uh, that film the film Woodstock. They must be making some money from that film. I mean, it gets no. I mean, the film, the film made that made the Woodstock Festival go into profit. But yeah. the, but it was the film that made it go into profit. Yeah, Prior to that, they were yeah. they were bankrupt practically. You know. Uh, Talking about courses, Ray, aren't you doing that uh, any Leibowitz course? Oh, the camera, yeah. Yeah. You like it? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It, Did I tell it's you? It's online. It's it's an online thing. Yeah. Yeah, I bought I bought for ninety dollars I bought all the master classes. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, for you. I, the Kevin Spacey one was really good and, and I was almost done with it and and the whole thing with his uh his his nastiness came up. But I, I finished it. And they closed it to new people. They wouldn't let anybody else watch it. Unless you bought it already. All of a sudden, Kevin Spacey no longer existed. His talent yeah. no longer existed. His life's work was all gone and didn't matter. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy when you think. And everyone of, was really pissed off. Well, you know, people, I, I, who, I I don't mind you chastising are. somebody and saying, "Okay, we're never going to hire you again to work in this business or, you know, you can't you can't buy a drink at my bar ever again or whatever you want to do." But to deny somebody's body of work, I think is wrong. Yeah. You know, to deny for instance the you know, the the Cosby show as an example with Cosby or his what his act uh, or the work that he did, or the fact that he was the first black man to be in a weekly television drama, okay, as one of the stars. To, to negate all of that because of what he wound up doing is, I think, wrong. You, don't, you should not deny the person's body of work just because of what the person became. But yes, and I can Jeff, tell you, I mean, Kevin Je Spacey was an incredible acting teacher, too. Yeah, Jeff really wants good. to say something. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I I think uh, that he's still on on early Saturday shows nope, for kids. Nope, they took it off. <laughs> they really? took it off. They Kevin took it off. Spacey? Yeah, yeah. Right. No. you're gonna ruin my no, weekend. No, no, not 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 the, not the Spacey kids. No, not that show. Uh, the Spacey. Kids. Lost in Spacey. Lost in Spacey. <laughs> Lost in Spacey. Uh, no, uh, oh, um, they took off the Bill Cosby show. It was, I think, on Nickelodeon. They, they oh, Bill Cosby show. Okay. They ditched I'm sitting, it. Oh, and Kevin Spacey had a yeah. show for no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, the, you know, the Cosby show was a groundbreaking show, if you think about it. I mean, I, I was never a big fan of it. I didn't watch it a lot. But it was groundbreaking because it was about a professional black family. Okay, it presented blacks in a light they had never been presented before on television, and Cosby managed to, to get away with it. Yes, Patrick. And I already thought in the last several months, the most, I don't know if ironic is, is the word for it, but I'll use it anyway. The most ironic thing is he was a gynecologist and no BGYN on the show. <laughs> well, really, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. So. I think that fits right in with what he's been accused of, and he was very good at it on the show as well. So, real life, you know, what is it? Art imitates life, and sometimes life imitates art. Yeah. Once you go. Yeah. So, never forget he was an OBGYN. Well, maybe he was researching when he drugged them and. Uh, hit on all those women. Well, yeah. you know, you got to you got to remember times times change. And when Cosby was originally doing all this stuff, okay, nobody thought twice of it. They knew he was doing it. You know? Yeah. It was fine. You know, he it, joked about well, it on, on the late night he shows. He joked about it on the late night shows, supposedly. I mean, I remember it. I, yeah. You know? I know. Um, uh, so, I mean, uh, at, at one point in history, we take this as being just kind of goofy behavior and then eventually we look upon it as being diabolical and horrible well, it was almost, well because uh, times uh, change do we you know it's, it's kind of a, well, it's a sometimes hard, they don't you i know, mean what like, he did uh, what he did to me was terrible under any conditions because i don't think there's any excuse even because of the times there's a certain morality you have and say that's not right okay but the fact is that he was being given basically social permission to do what he was doing by the society. Yes, Patrick. Um, the movie uh, 40 Year Old Virgin was on the other night on one of the cable channels. Yeah, it's a good and, little picture. Um, I, it, I remember that one of the people that was in the movie, one of the uh, sub stars, is in jail for murdering his girlfriend. Um, and I forget who it was. It wasn't one of the main stars, but, you know, with that show or that movie being shown. What movie is that again? 40-Year-Old uh, Virgin? 40-Year-Old Virgin, yep. yeah. There was, there was a, uh, one of the people in there, he ended up murdering his girlfriend. And I was just thinking to myself, I'm glad that they didn't take that movie off of, you know, the... Uh, uh, you know, the playlist and that, because you got somebody who fucked up in there and ruined it for everybody else. And it's the same with the Cosby show. Even though Bill Cosby is a star, there are all those other players, his kids 
and uh, Felicia Rashad that, you know, that show should not be eliminated out of existence because of his fuck up. Yeah. You know, you know why they don't uh, uh, hassle a guy for killing his girlfriend? Because a lot of people want to do that. You know, <laughs> look who's here, everybody. Look who's here. Uh -oh. Hello. Hey, hey. Good evening. Huh? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Good evening. How are you doing? Not too bad. <laughs> Not too bad. We haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, well, it's, it's been about two weeks or so, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good to have you here. Have you joined the ranks of the employed yet? Uh, I almost did, but I found out the company I was trying out, to, to basically a racket, uh, <laughs> a yellow cab that transformed into Z Trip. I wouldn't avoid. I would avoid a, both of those entities like the plague. Wow. Yeah. I refuse to pay to work. Oh, and do you have to pick up passengers in in a thing like that, or is it moving uh, items? Uh, you pick up passengers, and the audacity of it is, is that uh, not only are you owed a lease, but you have to, unfortunately, trust them to pay you after the route is completed. Why wouldn't you do something like Uber? I have. I can't stand Uber. I have no love for Uber. They treat their drivers like shit. They do. But yep. in comparison to Z Trip. They're a little less. Uh, they're a little uh, less, or a few shades lighter of the two evils. Okay, because yeah, I'd seen that uh, they had a commercial or something. And they say they download the money immediately to you from the fare. That is a good feature, admittedly. And you know, having uh, they only accept uh, they accept every form of payment basically except cash, which I like. Which is what I like about Uber. Lyft is the same way, and they're a little better than Uber. And I've noticed that since they charge a little lower, the uh, rider is a little lower than Uber does. That they're more inclined to give you favorable Uber reviews. Uber claims but, uh, they're going to even if you have a four point four. If you have anything below a four point six, even if it's a four point five nine, you risk deactivation from Uber, which is Amy bullshit. Yeah, should be. A thumbs up or thumbs down, and that's yeah, Amy, it. Amy got deactivated from Uber, uh, as she had said. Uh, Amy, Amy Manuel. Where is oh, really? really? Uh, four and so. Uh, she got a couple of, you know, four-star reviews. and Yeah. Boston. I, I drive for both. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'd rather I'd rather drive for Lyft. Lyft has become yeah. super popular in San Francisco. A lot of people aren't taking Uber unless their companies will only pay for Uber. Well, Uber is in a lot of trouble because you can tell they don't. You don't. So well, they you are. don't. You don't advertise like they are right now unless you're in trouble. I never saw Uber advertising, and now I see the head of the company going, "Hi, I'm the head of the company, and I just well, they've advertised, over, and I'm going to make life better for the drivers." Huh? They've advertised excessively as well under the leadership of Travis Kalanick, Dara Kashrashani's uh, predecessor. Travis founded the company. One of their CEOs said some very negative things, I guess, uh, in, in a cab. Well, they, and, uh, well, that was Kalanick. Oh, okay. I believe that was Kalanick. Yeah. Was it racial? Was racial stuff? Yeah, I think it might have been. Uh, there is an insidious penis looking motherfucker. Uh, that wouldn't have been from him. It would have been from. It would have been from Travis. But Dara, oh, he is an insidious cocksucker. It forced him. <laughs> Straight. Hey. If you look at his profile, one of his uh, portraits 31. of him standing in a business suit with a bunch of his uh, important associates, he looks just like a fucking penis. Tell me, he doesn't look like a penis. Who is this? Uh, the new CEO that took over in August. Oh. Of 2017, Dara Koshrashani, I believe is how you oh, pronounce yeah. his name. But I call him Dara the Cocksucker or, or Dara the Dickhead. Earlier in the show, Alex <laughs> was obsessed with penises. And uh, maybe you should pose, Alex, pose the question to Brian. He's seen more penises than most. <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, you're trying to figure out where penises uh, come from. Well, that wasn't really the way to put it. Uh, what? It, it, uh, who do you inherit your penis from? Oh. Yeah, you know, that's a question we you never asked. inherit it from mom. <laughs> huh? No, you didn't get it from mom. No, there's no question about that. Well, maybe, but uh, well, actually, where you're getting you can. at, Alex, 
may be suggesting that the uh, characteristics, the composition of your cock may, may be inherited from your mother's side of the family, much like your hairline as a guy yeah. is as well. But, no, but you know, what things. do I do? Hey, Mom, how big was Grandpa's dick? Well, get the roller out, honey. You know, most people or don't. Get a, or get like a little pee thing. Most people oh. never paid much attention. How many here have paid attention to your parents' genitalia? Oh, fuck no. No. You did, you did, Ray? Yeah, my because my dad, oh, I can't believe I'm about to say this. My yeah. dad used to walk around in like a Speedo and stuff at home. He had a huge dick. I hated it. <laughs> were you, were it was you so traumatized? Embarrassing. What? Yes. Trauma I was I traumatized. Can, I can imagine why you would be. So was my poor mother, I think. God, I hope they don't see this. Yeah, she had it in her. Oh, gee, I was thinking she of running in. I was thinking of running this as the clip tomorrow on Breaking News. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Alex, don't be now. All... <laughs> don't excerpt this clip in your next news flash. <laughs> Excuse me. Alive well, and get all these guys in trouble. Uh, yeah. Is your mother still alive, Ray? Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, then I guess... Yeah, uh, not until tomorrow. No, yeah. No, no, tomorrow, <laughs> like tomorrow like after she watches Breaking News, she's going to have a heart attack. Oh, How no. does she walk? Huh? <laughs> does I she haven't walk? asked her that. She's my mother. Yeah. No, but, but, but how did you... I, I saw my father's penis once. I, and I remember, I think, because he had an erection. Yeah. Okay, now, you, so you saw your father's penis. Uh, well... I had when we like camping and taking showers, but then we had a swimming pool in the backyard, and he used to wear a speedo. Mm -hmm. And man, he was packing, like, <laughs> like just walking around packing. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Is your father like, still alive, or did he blood like all Ron Jeremy style? Huh? Or did your did your uh, did your did your uh, is your father uh, still around? Yes, he is, and he wow. better not hear this. Oh. <laughs> Well, this is certainly going to be. Uh, how, much, how much is it worth to you that I not put this in the breaking news uh, segment it's worth tomorrow? Nothing. I'll live through the embarrassments. Uh, uh, you, you'll, uh, do you mind if I play it? I don't. It's fine. They don't watch this. Oh, okay. Fine. Their friends might show them, but then one of them I get. Like I, I just, just think it's. Uh, I think it's. Uh, yeah, but it, it's a topic that I've always. I've always wondered about because you know. Uh, you know, we know where uh, certain things are inherited, you know, and I'm sure a woman, if she has large breasts, knows where she got them from. She might not have gotten them from her mother, but her grandmother had huge breasts, you know. Huh? <laughs> she might have bought them. Yeah, yeah. Well, in this day and age, you're probably right, Phil. But uh, speaking of tiny penises and pen pricks, uh, how's Trump going? Uh, <laughs> you mean the guy with the stubby fingers? And the he's tiny hands? Right. Yeah, the tiny hands. Well, he's he's... He's Donnie, not. Tiny he's not doing too. Not he's not doing too well lately. Uh, uh, he's got. On which he, network you watch? Well, no, it doesn't matter which network I watch. It's in general. I mean, uh, the the whole North Korea thing is falling apart right in front of our eyes. We're going to see what he's made out of, though. Nobel if, uh, Prize. Nobel Prize. No, but if he uh, doesn't, uh, you know, get Kim to do what he's going to do. He's, he's not going to meet with him. He, he's not going to give Kim uh, like oh, other yeah, people. Yeah, did. yeah, yeah. But he, but he already has the medals made already for the trip. Yeah, the coins. Well, Haven't you seen yeah, those? I saw Marjorie put those on her Facebook. Page. Yeah, the, the coins. He has coins, and it's for celebrating the meeting between Kim Jong Un and the President of the United States. And uh, I think maybe he's a little premature in doing that. He'll be able to sell them. By the way, yeah. did you see that great clip of, of Trump in, the, in the Oval Office uh, when, when he was asked about, see, uh, Bolton made a comment on the Sunday shows that we're going to use the Libya as a model for what we want out of Korea, which was a bad thing to say because the mustache, well, what, no, what happened to Muammar Gaddafi? Oof. He got a bayonet shoved up his ass and then he was killed. Okay. Much like people. Mussolini did in the end of the world right, war. Right, right. So you don't say that, right? So Bolton makes this big gaffe, and then somebody asks, uh, what about the uh, Libyan model in this little press conference in the Oval Office? And he says, well, that was a, we never felt that way, and that was a mistaken idea, and blah, blah, blah. And he's putting it down as a notion, right, that we're going to use the Libyan model. And Bolton is standing right in back of him. 
Oh, Bolt knew. He, they said on the shows that he took one for the team. Oh, he uh, took one for the team. Every one of those like guys Rudy takes one for the on. team when they get, act stupid. <laughs> you know, they took one for the team because they in were my acting. In opinion, the only time were, anybody should ever take anything for the team is if they're a porn star in a gangbang. Yeah, that's exactly it. I vote on another that. note, though, Alex, I was in a series up on the other side, on the flip side, to show you that I'm not a chillery bot. I mean, I was, I was uh, in, a, in a rather intense and uh, derogatory, flame throwing. Uh, War of words with the with some assholes on Facebook concerning whether or not uh, uh, you know concerning the virtues of Pelosi, Schumer, and uh, you know those corporate cocksuckers. On well, the, the left ones that support MS13 that they're good yeah. guys. No, that they uh, take money from the that they're Republican light. They're diet Trump, just one calorie Trump, and I have no use for them any more than I would have use for a lump on my testicle. Yes, Pat. You only have one. Yes, Patrick. Uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, Pelosi was brought up because one of the more entertaining things for me the last several days has been with this MS-13 thing. Mm -hmm. it, all of a sudden, the Democrat and the left are talking about God, the spark of life from God. Everybody children of God, but when a Republican the last several years had even brought up God, it, well, we should ban God from everything. And Valid point. So, so I, I just found it ironic that Nancy is up there, everybody the, ch the children of God, and yet there's no Democrat condemning her for saying it. And I remember... I remember back in 20, I don't mean, I'm sorry to interrupt if I did, but I just want to get this point across before I forget, because I know I will, my dumb ass will. But uh, I remember back in 2011 or so, Alex, when you still had that show on Sirius, you and Christina were talking about the, uh, uh, the, the concern over the new Democratic platform and how you had said, Alex, that you would have been right there with those uh, left left leaning uh, Democrats booing and hissing every time they brought up or tried to ramrod the notion that Jerusalem should be recognized as a capital. Fuck that. Of course yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna piss off Patrick here, but I'm an avowed atheist. I think I think I think all religions are full of shit and that uh, we hey, we Google only have ourselves. Well no, I agree Google with you. Not only, you left in the not church, only not the are they full of shit, but they are probably one of the major reasons for the problems in this world. Yes, oh, Patrick. Yes, they are. Absolutely. Patrick, yeah, Patrick, yeah, 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 Patrick had his hand up and then Ray. Patrick has his hand up. Yes, Patrick. Uh, you didn't piss me off, Brian. I I don't care what people think or, or don't think. I'm I'm a Christian. I don't shove people's faces. I just like to bring up, much like you do, the inconsistencies. Oh, yeah. No, I appreciate. It. That's why we like. That's why he likes yes. you. That's why I like you, and that's hopefully why people like me too. Because I'm not kissing Democratic no. ass anymore. Than okay, I'm Ray has said. No, no, wait next. a second. Nancy Pelosi was exercising hyperbole. She was not proselytizing. She meant. She said, "We are, you know, everyone is a child of God in the sense that we are all equal." She was not saying. She was not. But she was not positing that we should all be Christians and getting into the whole thing about how this country is a Christian nation and all bullshit. All she said is we're all children of God. She but was using hyperbole. She was taking she's she's sorry, it's not the same thing. She not took the same Trump thing. Wait, 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 you didn't put your hand up, Phil, and there are a lot of people with I their hands up. Hand no, up. you didn't have your fucking hand up. You the goddamn tape. <laughs> my fucking hand was up. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Perulis, never sir. Never recognize it. Me? Yes. Okay. Hey, I'm up. Phil, wait. Uh, you know, th this whole thing with Pelosi's a diversion. Uh, there's a lawsuits going on in San Francisco now about Hunter's Point and the radioactive waste that was uh, mishandled by the company the Navy hired to do the cleanup. Nancy Pelosi's fucking nephew made deals with Lennar, the home builder there, to uh, build up a massive development. And by the way, Feinstein's husband, Richard Blum, oh, geez, oh bailed out Lennar. Lennar is the biggest home builder in the nation now. He bailed the, the company out before they went into this Hunter's Point I, deal. Corporate so crash. That, 
you think I can get a good deal on a condo there? Yeah, right. Excuse <laughs> me, right I have no influence. Okay. Pelosi, uh, Pelosi is crooked. You know, next year ahead. Shit, uh, I, I have no influence over what my nephews do. I don't know what they do. I know what they do. I, they will not listen to me about anything. Why do you think Pelosi had anything to do with what her nephew did? Be, to read, read. Uh, I'll, I'll send you links. Uh, okay. So because she was she used yeah, her yeah, office. She proof. used her office to help him advance. That that's what the deal was. Okay, well that sucks if that's true. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I happen to be friends with Alexandra Pelosi, and I think they're a nice family. Yes, uh, uh, Pat. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> well, fuck you. They're a nice family, uh, and and by the way, at a time when face. women. When women weren't in politics, Nancy Pelosi went into politics, and she went into it at a later age. And it's really quite an amazing story if you ever check it out. Yes, and uh, screwed he, Bruce Hershenson out of the position. Well, he deserved being uh, nah, he, fucked up. You know, up. she lied about it. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, according to you. Uh, uh, yes, Patrick. Um, Ray, I, I, I wasn't bringing up Pelosi as if she was trying to convince everybody into Christianity, just the fact that she said the children of God is an inference by a lot of people that she's bringing up a religious topic or a religious statement. Not that she's pushing it on everybody, but I, every time a Republican had brought up, I shouldn't say every time, but many times a Republican had brought up God or children of God, a statement similar to that, where it isn't in your face that Israel should be this or Christianity should be this, they still get slapped in the face that God doesn't belong in the Congress. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, Patrick, every president that we've ever known ends every speech with, uh, God, and God bless the United yeah. States of America, you know, so... Uh, and and it, God is all over our money, uh, you know. It's all over our lives. He so, never used to be all so, over our money. So so in a way, we in a way them. in a way you have to think of the term God as generic, okay, That's not as saying. secular. When did the money say in God we trust? When did they put that on? Uh, I think it's Probably been there around the Eisenhower administration. It, it was right. It was a Cold War thing. Yeah. They did. It was right after the. No Russian no no. Wars. That was the Cold War thing. Was the. Uh, uh, pledge, oh, the pledge of pledge, pledge of allegiance. allegiance. When oh, I learned I when I learned the, the pledge of allegiance, I it was I uh, you know the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty yeah. and justice for all. There was no under God, and that was thrown in in the it's in the fifties, in the fifties as a result of the Red Scare. Yeah, and it wasn't the same for the money. It wasn't the same. No, uh, oh. as long as I've been alive, I remember it saying, "In God okay. we trust." Oh, okay. Hey, you know, or, or uh, as as uh, as, as as uh, Gene Shepard once wrote a book called, uh, uh, you know, "In uh, God We Trust, All Others Pay Cash." Right. You know, <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance was my first uh, radio PA gig in elementary school. I used to do it in the mornings on the uh, on the PA. You know, uh, for this, for the entire school. No, well, I'm sure oh, everybody was yeah. praying to Satan instead. <laughs> and that, to this day, remains the most professional thing you've ever done. And no, uh, we, we've got a diverse group here tonight. This is cool. pull out the photographs. <laughs> Hell, Satan. Yeah. Oh, you want to see a photograph? Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll turn my uh, camera. No, we don't want to see a photograph. Oh, the, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Uh, it's a vertical photograph. Can you see? Uh, yeah, we can see, see it. Any. We can see it. Wait a minute. Jack oh, Bishop is calling. Homeless guy between a, an advertisement of some legs. Legs. Uh, yeah. Jack Bishop is calling. No doubt to plug his program, which comes on right after us. Hello, ja hello Jack. There, hello there. Hello, hello there. Are you growing a nice beard? Wait, are you growing a beard? Uh, I'm playing with it. I, you know, I haven't decided. I tried and I gave up. Yeah, you know. The, oh, my by the way, is by the way, I. I you know, I put it this way: Jeff looks so good with him, and Jeff is my brother of another mother. That I thought I'd try. No, but I'll tell you. I should something. ask you about dick sizes. Do you know where dick <laughs> sizes come from? Just because she's black? Yes. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, yes. All you have to do is look at the Republican Party. <laughs> well, you really have to look with a magnifying glass yeah. there. Uh, by the way, by the way, I I want to mention this. This is my my anniversary. 
uh, w one week ago, I started working out, and out of uh, eight, out of eight days, I worked out seven. Thank you very much. Wow! Yeah, congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. And I remember, by the way, Alex, I just want to say I, I was listening to the podcast uh, from Friday, and yeah, people were ragging you about the, the tearing the towel. We should have just said, "Well, I, I, if that were me, I'd say I don't give a fuck if I wear it as a tampon. At least I'm at least I'm not sweating. I don't give a fuck." <laughs> I didn't, want, I, I didn't even bring it. I didn't even bring a towel today. I forgot it, you know. And they have these little napkins you can wipe down your seat with and stuff. So, hey, I just want to say something in defense of my, of my, of my son there, Brian. One, if you got one big hairy ball, that's all you need. Exactly. That's what I was wondering. That's what I was. I was gonna say that earlier. Yeah, hey, you do only need one. Like Lance Armstrong only has one, and he's a well, badass. I've got a, Hitler. I've got a cousin. I've got a cousin with three kids who who only has one. He lost one back in his twenties due to cancer. But I yeah. told him it's it's hard to keep us black guys down. Well, you know, you know the human body, uh, uh, God in His wisdom, uh, made the human body with almost two of everything. You know, I mean, we have two kidneys, and you can have one kidney go out, and you're fine. I think uh, liver, we only have one liver, but the liver, you can cut out most of the liver, and still the liver will operate. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, that's why you have two testicles, and women have two ovaries, and everything. It, 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 we, our body is redundant. Except our hearts. That would be good if no, we had two hearts. Our hearts and don't do. forget our brains there, Robert. Oh, that's our true. Brains. But we do have two sides of the brain. And we do have two sides of the brain. And we do have ago. we have two <laughs> sides to the brain, and only one side do we really ever use. The other one we can start using if one side goes out. Yes, uh, 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 whatever uh, Jack. guy's name, Jack. Yeah. Well, I know hey, you by another it, name. It, you can call me whatever name you want to. Just don't call me late for dinner. Yeah. Uh, and in deference to two brains, if we had two brains, we'd be Doctor Who. Yeah. No, no, two yeah. hearts. Two hearts. Is two that hearts. Two it's, hearts. Yeah. No, that's hearts. Spock. Spock has two hearts. No, no. Doctor <laughs> Who has two hearts. No. I never well, heard I that Spock He's had dead. two hearts. Spock has two hearts. No, he has no. one heart. Yeah, Vulcans. No. No, Vulcans do not have two hearts. I thought they Spock have two Jewish. <laughs> they they, they, the they West, were but... Jewish. Leonard Nimoy was Jewish. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, Jeff. Many years ago, uh, a, a doctor in Africa started developing uh, heart Debate. changes and things Christian, like that. Christian Barnard. Christian Barnard. And yeah. he used pig or animal hearts that were supplements. Hmm. Christian Barnard did the first heart transplant. Yeah. And isn't Dick Cheney still walking around with an artificial heart no, to go along no, with the No, no, he got a heart transplant. Yeah, Frank, yeah, Frankenstein. Yeah, he no longer walks around with a battery. <laughs> I just checked. One out of every 5.5 million boys are born with two penises. How wow. many out of one out of every? How much? 5.5 million. Hmm. Where do you I've find seen pictures too? So what? you can go like this and work the, really work the shaft. Yeah. Aren't, aren't there people running around with two heads? You know, yeah, yeah, those are called Siamese twins. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, twins. the girls are, are on there now. I see yeah. it all, all my news feeds. Those two girls, oh, or the one girl ones. with the two heads. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? There's a. Oh, well, they yeah. have personality. When I say something offensive to somebody, you know, people you know, have to we, look at we me. We just used to call them, those so. people. We used <laughs> to call, remember when we used to uh, uh, call those kids. I mean, people. I care, but I can relate. You remember when we used to call those people freaks? Yeah. <laughs> Well, sure. let's, yeah, go, let's, go, we let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Go be yeah, right, yeah. Exactly. Thank you, Phil Meyer. Thank you for being with us tonight, as well as Patrick Blazik and John Perulis and Brian. Great to see you again. Always great because you make us feel that we're sane and you're not. Uh, Jeff Stein. <laughs> thank Happy you, Rob. Always a pleasure. Ray Renati. Uh, you don't mind if I use the clip, do you? Because it's such no, a good fine. clip. I got to do it. And oh, Jack, I, I, I knew he watch. was going to do it. I knew he was going to do it. J Jack, well, it was too good a clip, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, and I want to. I want to. Hand looks like when I raise it. 
<laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, stubby little fingers, huh? Mm, yeah. Ah, stubby fingers. Ah, I see. Anyway, everybody, you know what I'd like you to all do? Just wave a big goodbye to everybody so they can see that you're happy and we didn't offend you too terribly or we didn't beat you up on the program. Thank you, everybody. Uh, that's our citizens panel for tonight. Let me hang up on them so they can go away and so the next show can use the lines. And uh, the next show is, of course, as you know, uh, the uh, in intersection with Jack and Amy. It's followed at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time by Connections tomorrow night. We start off with the franchise MC and the arena at 8.30 Eastern Daylight Time, followed at 9.30 by uh, The Exchange with Damian Chaplin. And then I'll see you again tomorrow night, right back here. Same time, same station in life at 10 o'clock. And if you see her. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye.